Hello, my pack, my tribe. Welcome to Halloween After Dark. Hope you like my new th official, unofficial theme song. It's unofficial because it is actually an uncopyrighted song, and therefore nobody can complain about it. And it's official because I decided I'm going to use it because it's a badass song. And uh, by the way, it's by a band called Cold Driven, and the name of the song is The Wicked Side of Me. Kind of fits, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, on to tonight's show. A lot of people, a lot of people, have been theorizing that there's a connection between uh, crypto creatures such as Bigfoot and UFOs. I respectfully disagree. and But there's a reason for that. And, and I'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, the reason that it, that's been a theory, by the way, is because a lot of big sighting, Bigfoot sightings happen to be in the same areas as a lot of UFO sightings. But they're not just seen where UFOs have been sighted, obviously. Um, but I have my own theory about Bigfoot. And I'd like to share that with you. And this is why I I disagree with that theory, by the way. Um, I think that Bigfoot is not a hoax. I think that Bigfoot is very real. Just not in the way that most people think. My people, Native American people, have been telling stories about Bigfoot for generations so in in my culture we're very aware of Bigfoot's existence but what I think Bigfoot is is something even my ancestors didn't know I think what Bigfoot actually is is an elemental I think he is a type of spirit that can fully manifest and become physically solid. Which would explain how he can leave behind evidence like footprints and hair, etc., etc., and then just poof, disappear. Because people have followed the tracks and then they just vanish. So I can certainly understand why people think that there's a UFO connection. They think like Bigfoot got beamed up to a ship or whatever. But I just don't think that. Because the evidence doesn't support it, in my opinion. He, he vanishes too quickly with no UFOs in sight. More times than not. And they're, they're just now trying to apply that same theory to other cryptos, like the Loch Ness Monster and, and other sea serpents, or lake serpents, rather. Um, they're trying to apply it to uh, other forms of Bigfoot, such as the Yeti and the Yeren. Um They're trying to apply that theory to the Jersey Devil. Which, okay, let me let me clear something up for you. Um, and once again, these are just my opinions, my theories, whatever. Um, there are two different versions of the Jersey Devil. One is like this, this big, like, goat-headed... 
like somewhat serpentine like creature I think that one is like the product of somebody reading like far too much of the Bible especially in the Old Testament and and getting way too wasted okay I, I think that version of the Jersey Devil is just basically bullshit designed to um, just sell like merchandise you know and like I survived Jersey Devil t-shirts or whatever you know um, you know what I'm getting at anyway so uh, I, I disagree with that version of it However, there is another version, and there is evidence to support it, that what the Jersey Devil might actually be is a form of giant prehistoric bat. Because a lot of the more modern sightings have been along those lines of a bat-like creature that's massive in size. And but when I say massive in size, I don't mean it's like a hundred feet tall. I mean like it's the size of a of a predatory cat, like a tiger, but slightly bulkier and with wings. In fact, somebody actually captured a photo of it, and. It has, of course, been denounced a lot by the more closed-minded types. Let me see if I can actually find this picture. If the page will ever freaking load. There we go. This isn't the pick I'm looking for, but this is kind of an artist uh, rep- representation of it. Go ahead and copy the image and post it to ghostwolfradio.com in the chat. If the stupid page will ever load. I don't know why my internet's so freaking slow. Uh. 
but here is that picture if you want to join us at ghostwolfradio.com the only place you're going to find Howling After Dark But, yeah, that link will take you to the photo. Uh, anyways. So that's what I think the Jersey Devil actually is. And there's always the possibility it could in fact be an elemental too. Because it disappears quite a bit. I mean how can something that big just vanish? to the point where nobody can ever really track it down. And that's the thing about a lot of this stuff is like like they're saying the Loch Ness monster for example is a hoax and they've been saying that for years but then how come there's been sightings of the fucking thing since like the 1600s nobody's going to keep a hoax going for you know hundreds of years it doesn't make any sense But, you know, that's typical skeptics for you. They they want, or not skeptics, but uh, the typical of, of the typical closed-mindedness of some people, uh, particularly the, the quote-unquote scientific types. Because if it doesn't fit in their little box, it doesn't exist. That's the way they view things. And that's really sad, because it, when your mind isn't open to the possibilities, there are none. That's the same kind of thinking, as I've said before, that said that the world was flat. That said that we would never travel to space. That said that we would never land on the moon. That said that, you know... We would never, you know, identify Jack the Ripper. We would never find any of the remains of Amelia Earhart's plane. It, these are the same people that have shouted down our way of thinking for generations. Because they can't understand it. And they fear what they don't understand. You know, and it's just, oh, God. People like that truly drive me insane. They do. They they really do, because it, it, it just blows my mind that anybody could be that fucking stupid. 
to be honest about it, because that's what it is. It's a form of stupidity. To absolutely ignore the evidence before you is absolute foolishness. And the craziest part about it like with the Loch Ness Monster we can't definitively say that it doesn't exist. And I'll tell you why. Because even by the close-minded type scientists even by their own admission it is entirely plausible that something prehistoric under the ocean trapped inside a a thermal pocket of of like a, a volcano lava tube for example could have been released because of tectonic plate shifts or other seismic activity into a lake. It is entirely plausible that that could happen. It's not saying that it did happen and that that's what Nessie is, but it's not impossible either. I think there's definitely got to be something to it. Otherwise, why have people been reporting it for so long? It's not like this is a relatively new phenomenon. This has been reported for hundreds of years. Same thing with Bigfoot. We have stories about Bigfoot that are thousands of years old. And some of the stories about the Yeti in, in Tibet are even older. Yeah, it doesn't fit into their little box. So, you know, they do everything they can to throw it away. And every time we get good evidence to support it, their existence, what happens? They find a way to shut it down and say, well, no, this isn't conclusive or it must have been ta tampered with or, or the sample was contaminated by humans. They don't fucking know any of that. They're just saying that because it doesn't fit into their little box. And I can't say that definitively any of these things actually exist. As far as cryptos are, are concerned. But what I can tell you is this. And this is something you can decide to believe me on or not. I don't really care. But in 27 years of investigating the paranormal as a whole, including crypto, the one thing I can tell you for an absolute certainty that our world is much bigger and much more beautiful than we give it credit for. Do you know that after hundreds of stories, over hundreds of years of giant octopus and giant squid in the ocean that were, were shouted down and labeled flights of fancy by drunken sailors that there was actually a giant squid that surfaced 
and was caught on camera. And I'm going to show you a picture of it right now. This thing is so large that its eyes are the sizes of like a tire on your car. Okay, so taking into account that we now definitively have proof that giant squid and the like exist. You're going to tell me in the same breath that it's impossible that the Loch Ness Monster and other lake monsters exist. You're going to tell me that that's impossible. Even though for hundreds and hundreds of years, sailors were called drunken fools for talking about giant squids, and yet now here's photographic fucking evidence proving it beyond the shadow of a fucking doubt. It was not only proven in a photograph, they fucking videotaped it, and it was on the news. So tell me, please, close-minded people that might be listening, tell me how it's an impossibility that Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and other lake monsters and, uh, and the Jersey Devil and Mothman and all that, tell me how it's an impossibility and I'll show you a picture of a giant squid. Do I know definitively that Bigfoot exists? Yes, I do. I've had experiences, and those are enough for me. Is it enough to prove it to close-minded bastards that aren't going to listen to anything anyways? No, of course not. But nothing would be. The only way closed-minded people are ever going to believe anything is if it's proven beyond the shadow of a doubt to the point that it is entered into a textbook in school. Even though uh, half of what are in textbooks nowadays is a bunch of bullshit. But still, there you go. I just, I don't know. I think it's ridiculous how close-minded some people are. I really do. Like, it, there's been so much evidence about Bigfoot that, yeah, some of it might seem kind of hokey. Some of it might seem kind of suspect. But for every piece of stuff like that, there are, like, hundreds that are, like, so succinct and so on the money that it, in my way of thinking it can't be ignored I mean people have ripped apart the Patterson footage the Gimlin Patterson footage and explain this to me if that's just some person in a fucking suit then how come I can see the muscles ripple underneath the fur 
that doesn't happen from wearing a Halloween costume. And not helping the case at all is like some fucking asshole supposedly came out of nowhere saying that, oh, I wore the costume back in the 60s. It was a hoax, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and how much money did he get fucking paid for saying that shit? Because he didn't do it for free, I can tell you right now. And it was already proven by by his main opposition, being Patents and Gimlin, that he had nothing to do with them at all. In fact, they were completely unaware of his existence. But, you know who's truly the biggest perpetrators of the closed-minded sect? The media. We could have definitive proof that Bigfoot is real tomorrow. And the media would still treat it like, oh, those kooky guys found new quote-unquote evidence because that's what happened when they found DNA even before the results were in that's how they were treating it like it was all you know somebody's joking or it's a hoax or whatever but that's how they are that's how they are Which is why I laughed my ass off, actually. Um, there was an episode of <laughs> Ghost Adventures not too long ago where they had a special guest investigator that happened to be one of the anchors for the Today Show. And they it blew her fucking mind. It blew her mind. So, I don't know. Anyways, back to cryptos. So, uh, I don't think it's a secret that Bigfoot or Sasquatch, the Yeti, Yaren, all the other variations are, are all uh, stemmed from the same creature just adapted to live in different environments so I'm not going to get into each one of those individually um, And like I said at the beginning of the show, they have been trying to say that, you know, they're linked to UFOs and, and yada, yada, yada. Now, I disagree with that. I think that both things exist. I just don't believe that they have anything to do with each other. I think if they're seen in the same area, it's just coincidence. And that's all it is, is coincidence. But, I'm also open-minded enough to know that anything is possible. I just, it doesn't fit what evidence up until this point has told me.
so I guess in, in the world of cryptozoology, I would be kind of a skeptic, I guess. A skeptical believer might be a better word. Because I have my own thoughts and theories and ideas and everything. It just doesn't fit with what everybody else thinks. So, there you have it. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's just, you see things like this giant squid and then people can't dispute that they exist anymore. They've been seen, you know. Um, so I just think it's hilarious that they can see something like that and then in the same breath say that Bigfoot doesn't exist or, you know, any of the, these things don't exist. How do they know? For hundreds of years, they were so certain that giant squid didn't exist either. And here, look. There's the picture to prove it. And now there's no doubt that they exist. So, how come a giant squid, which was a creature of myth and legend, exists and yet Bigfoot can't? or Loch Ness can't, or the Jersey Devil can't. And I think if you think about things in those terms, you start to see how truly ridiculous close-minded people are. I just don't understand those people. I really don't. And yet, I, you know, we all kind of have to deal with them. Because, unfortunately, as long as there is a paranormal world, a paranormal community, there's going to be closed-minded pricks trying to shout us down. until, you know, the evidence is so great that they can't deny it anymore. And I think that day is actually coming. I think the day is actually coming when the closed-minded types can't ignore us anymore. And I think when that day comes, we're going to be a recognized profession in paranormal research and investigation. I think it will become a recognized profession. I think you'll end up actually having to go for go to school for it. Or at the very least be certified for it. Which, honestly, I would like to see happen. Because it would eliminate a lot of our problems. Because a lot of our problems in like probably like the past 10 years have all stemmed from the fact that there's too many uh, inexperienced amateurs that don't know what they're doing, that think they know what they're doing, getting into too much trouble, and doing stupid shit like burning down plantations in Louisiana, or you know, being greedy and stealing, you know, the funds made from a public ghost hunt. Yeah, that happened too, by the way. Um, 
you know, shit like that. Too many, and too many hobbyists. And that's what a lot of these young teams are. They're hobby. They're not paranormal investigators. They're paranormal hobbyists. It is nothing but a hobby to them. If it is only a fucking hobby to you, don't even start. Don't even be involved. Because this is a fucking calling. Hold on, hold on, I'm checking the time. Yep. Yeah. Got, oh, a little over four minutes. And I don't know if I'm going to do a part two tonight, folks. I am pretty freaking exhausted, to be honest with you. Um, kind of let you into my world a little bit here. Um, yesterday I worked morning shift from 8 to 2. The day before that I worked a double. And today I worked a double. And the first part of the double I worked by myself. Because, like, I work at a, a animal rescue. I, I think a lot of you know this by now. Um, but for those that don't, that, that's kind of my day job, I guess you could say. Um, quote, unquote, because I work nights mostly. Uh, but uh, what happened was somebody over at the adoption center, because our, our company, we have the adoption center, and then we have the spay and neuter clinic, clinic where... Uh, we actually do more than spay and neuter, by the way. We actually work a lot with uh, animals that are just sick. And uh, so this morning, um, for most of the morning, I had to work by myself because somebody at the adoption center called off and my... Uh, fiance's sister works there too and uh she had to go cover their shift which meant i was alone which yeah it's hard but i i got through it and i got everything done and i was out of there you know a, a little bit later than intended but basically on time and then uh tonight during the second part of my shift <sighs> Monday nights we have vol these lovely volunteers that come in and, and walk our dogs and uh, they're from a website I, I think called Yellow so if you're interested definitely check it out um but these lovely people, um, you know, they come in Monday nights around 6 and they walk a bunch of our dogs, which helps us tremendously. Um, but unfortunately, tonight we got 14 new dogs right before the yellow volunteers showed up. Which was very 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 chaotic because we're trying to get everything done and and keep up with everything and you know we got volunteers coming in and all these new dogs and it, was, it was just a lot to deal with is what I'm getting at and uh, it kind of wiped me out uh, about 40 seconds left So yeah, I don't think I'm going to do a part two tonight, folks, but uh, 
I, I didn't get to do a Sunday show either uh, for, you know, the reasons I just explained. But I am going to do another show tomorrow night when I get home from work. I'm going to go ahead and do another show. I'm going to do... a show kind of about my